Hey YouTube, in this video, we'll answer the question, what are VLANs? This is a network topology with three switches and two routers. The routers create network boundaries, which means we have three total IP networks on this topology. The routers facilitate the communication between these networks, and the switches facilitate all the communication within these networks. If you understand all this, then you can understand the first major function of a VLAN. VLANs allow you to break up one physical switch into smaller virtual mini switches. This topology above with three physical switches can be recreated with one physical switch and multiple VLANs. Each VLAN acts as its own independent mini switch. And just like in the topology above, each VLAN handles all the communication within each network. And the routers, just like before, continue to facilitate the communication between each network. These two topologies operate exactly the same. A VLAN is simply a number assigned to each switch port. On this switch, someone configured this port and this port to be a part of VLAN 10, and these two ports to be a part of VLAN 20, and these two ports to be in VLAN 30. Once that happened, these ports now act as an independent switch detached from the rest of the switch ports. The switch will always ensure if a frame comes in on a particular VLAN, it can only go out the other ports in the same VLAN. Even if host A sent a frame with a destination MAC address of host B, the switch would not forward it out the port in VLAN 30. You can consider it as if each VLAN maintained its own independent MAC address table. So, the first major function of a VLAN is that VLANs allow you to break up one physical switch into smaller virtual mini switches. The second major functions of VLANs is VLANs allow you to take those virtual mini switches and extend them to other physical switches. Notice here we've extended VLAN 10 and VLAN 30 to another physical switch. Each switch's VLAN configuration is independent, which means on this top switch someone had to configure these three ports in VLAN 10. And on this bottom switch someone had to configure these two ports in VLAN 10. This links the VLAN 10 ports in the top switch to the VLAN 10 ports on the bottom switch. This topology functions exactly like this topology. In fact, you could even consider this the logical topology and this the physical topology. Either way, a packet from host C to host T goes through the red switch, or VLAN 10, then through this router, then through the orange switch, or VLAN 20, then through this other router, then finally through the blue switch, or VLAN 30, before it arrives at host D. So in summary, the two major functions of VLANs are, VLANs allow you to break up one physical switch into smaller virtual mini switches, and VLANs allow you to take those virtual mini switches and extend them across to other physical switches. We need to point something out about this method of extending VLANs across multiple physical switches. Notice here we extended two VLANs, VLAN 10 and VLAN 30. That requires two connections between these switches, one for VLAN 10 and one for VLAN 30. If we had instead needed to extend 15 different VLANs between the switches, we would need 15 connections between each switch. This creates a scale problem, because if these were 24 port switches, there would only be nine ports left over for actual hosts and routers. Instead, a mechanism was developed which allows multiple VLANs to traverse a single link. Notice here, we only need one link between each switch, and that one link is carrying both VLAN 10 and VLAN 30. We can actually do the same for these routers. Notice each router has two connections to the same switch. These can both be replaced with a single link carrying multiple VLANs. Here, we've made it so that each device only has one physical connection to each other device, and some of the links carry only one VLAN and others carry multiple VLANs. Now, links which carry multiple VLANs are known as trunk ports or tagged ports. Links which carry only one VLAN are known as access ports or untagged ports. Now, there is something else to consider. Traffic on the wire is simply a bunch of ones and zeros. If a bunch of ones and zeros arrive on this link from host C, the switch knows they all belong to VLAN 10, 
because access ports only carry traffic for one VLAN. But here, on these trunk ports, it isn't as simple. If a bunch of ones and zeros arrived, something has to exist to designate which ones and zeros belong to VLAN 10 and which belong to VLAN 30. That something is what we know as a VLAN tag. Each packet has its data payload, then a layer 3 header, then a layer 2 header. Inside the layer 2 header is where the source and destination MAC address appear, which indicate who is talking to who. When a packet traverses a trunk port, an extra piece of information is added inside the layer 2 header, which indicates what VLAN that traffic belongs to. That is the VLAN tag. The way it works is when this switch sends traffic on a trunk port, it marks all the frames with a VLAN tag so the other switch knows which VLAN that traffic belongs to. This is how it works. Notice, every time a packet is crossing a trunk port, a VLAN tag is added to tell the receiving switch what VLAN that traffic belongs to. This is what the VLAN tag actually looks like on the wire. On the left, this is a packet as it comes in to an access port. Notice the layer 2 header has three fields, type, source, and destination. On the right is what the packet looks like as it goes through a trunk. The standard for what goes inside a VLAN tag is 802.1Q. This is simply the rules which govern what a VLAN tag actually looks like on the wire. 802.1Q VLAN tags add this part right here. There are a few fields in the VLAN tag, but the important one is down here. This field indicates that this packet should be associated to VLAN 10. This is the same illustration as earlier, and is still an accurate logical representation of what you are looking at above. Traffic from host C to D is still going through the exact same path and the exact same process logically. The only thing that is different is the physical topology. In the end, one of the key benefits of VLANs is your logical topology is not constrained by your physical topology. Before VLANs, your physical topology greatly affected your desired logical topology. VLANs eradicated that problem entirely. Now there is one last concept we need to discuss before we wrap up our discussion of VLANs. Let's just focus on this bottom switch and trunk port for a minute. If this trunk port receives a frame tagged for VLAN 10, the switch will only send this frame out VLAN 10 ports. If this trunk port receives a frame tagged for VLAN 30, the switch will only send the frame out VLAN 30 ports. But what happens if a frame arrives without a VLAN tag? The switch has to associate the frame with a VLAN so it knows which ports are eligible to receive this frame 802.1Q provides for a way to set a fallback VLAN so that if an untagged frame arrives on a trunk port, the switch has a VLAN it can associate the untagged traffic to. That feature is known as the native VLAN or the PVID, the port VLAN ID. It is a per trunk port configuration and any frame that arrives without a VLAN tag is automatically associated with the native VLAN. In this case, this trunk port's native VLAN is 10. Therefore, this untagged frame will only be forwarded out VLAN 10 ports. The native VLAN also plays a role in sending frames as well. For example, if host D sends a frame, it'll arrive on the switch on an access port in VLAN 30. So the switch will associate this frame with VLAN 30. When the switch tries to forward the frame out the trunk port, it'll first check the local native VLAN configuration. If the frame it is trying to send does not match the native VLAN, it'll tag the frame and forward it as normal. If, however, a frame is meant to be sent across the trunk that does match the native VLAN, a tag does not need to be added, and the frame will be sent out untagged. So to quickly review, if a trunk port receives a frame with a tag, the frame will be associated with a tag VLAN. If a trunk port receives a frame without a tag, the frame will be associated with a native VLAN. If a trunk port is sending a frame 
that does not belong to the native VLAN. The frame will be sent with a VLAN tag. And if a trunk port is sending a frame that does belong to the native VLAN, the frame is sent without a VLAN tag. The native VLAN is simply the one VLAN that's allowed to traverse a trunk without a VLAN tag. So to summarize everything we've learned, VLANs provide two major functions. One, they break up physical switches into virtual mini switches. And two, they extend those virtual mini switches across multiple physical switches. This allows your logical topology to be unconstrained by your physical topology. We learned that access ports or untagged ports are ports which carry traffic for only one VLAN. And we learned that trunk ports or tagged ports are ports which carry traffic for multiple VLANs. We learned that the standard for tagging traffic is known as the 802.1Q standard. And we learned that the native VLAN is the one VLAN which is allowed to traverse a trunk or tagged link without a VLAN tag. To learn more about VLANs, check out pracnet.net slash VLANs. If you're studying for a networking certification like the CCNA, check out pracnet.net slash CCNA for a list of articles you should read. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider liking, subscribing, and then suggesting another topic in the comments for the next video. Thank you for watching and have a great day.